Hey, singers, does your voice get more and more tired as you use it? Or is it like a New Yorker, ready to burn the candle at both ends? Either way, today we're going to increase your vocal stamina. Hi, singers. I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, joining you for episode 107 of Voice Lessons to the World. Today's question comes from Susan T. in Tacoma, Washington. Susan writes, Dear Justin, I sing in my church choir, and after rehearsals, I feel hoarse. What can I do to increase my vocal stamina? Oh, well, that is a marvelous question, Susan. We hear that all the time here at NYVC, not just from fans of the show, but from many of our professional singers who are pop rock R&B recording artists that perform and tour, or who are Broadway performers who have to sing eight shows a week. Whether you sing professionally or you just sing for the soul, we want your voice to stand the test of time. In fact, we want it to be like a fine wine, getting better with each passing day. So today, we're going to take a 10-step vocal stamina test to see how things are going for you. Here's how it works. As we go along, I'm gonna be asking you some questions. If you answer the question, yes, you get one point. If you answer the question, no, you get no points. At the end, we're gonna tally them up to find out if your stamina is a vocal dud or a vocal stud, okay? So here we go with stamina step one, conditioning and vocal athleticism. Conditioning is a term we usually use for athletes, but never forget the voice is muscular. Nobody sees a marathon coming by their house and just decides, hey, that looks fun. Maybe I'll run 42,195 meters right now. And why not? Because you gotta train for that. You gotta make sure your body is conditioned for that kind of athleticism. The voice is no different, yet singers sometimes expect to do unrealistic things without working their way up to it, with vocal exercises, practice, training, and time. One of the worst mistakes is to pick a difficult song, try it for a few days, and then give up on yourself because you couldn't achieve it quickly. If you want greater stamina, make sure that you spend the time on conditioning. My general rule of thumb is that your vocal exercises should eventually be far more difficult than any repertoire you work on. That way you look at the song and you say, that's nothing. So here comes question number one. Am I exercising my voice on a regular basis? If you answered yes, score one point. Step two, vocal cross-training. The most gifted athletes usually aren't just one thing. They are many things. In other words, they're not just strong, they're also fast. They're not just fast, they're also flexible. They're not just flexible, they're also coordinated. The same thing is true of vocal athletes. The best singers are not usually one-trick ponies. They're fully facultied fillies and thorough-throated thoroughbreds. And trust me, ain't none of them getting hoarse. Cross-training means giving the voice lots of variety, singing more than one style, working on all the vocal registers, not just singing high notes all the time, but working on the middle, practicing vibrato, straight tone, riffs and runs, sustains. I could go on and on. But suffice to say, vocal variety prospers vocal stamina in a major way. So ask yourself, do I practice a wide variety of styles and techniques? If yes, add a point. Step three, warming up. Know thyself and know thy voice. Many singers find that their voices feel warmed up just from speaking throughout the day. They can just start singing. Others find that they need a five or 10 minute warm up before performing. Experiment with how much time your voice needs to warm up. 
Once you have a sense of that, make a commitment to honor this before a performance, rehearsal, recording session, even a voice lesson. Just remember, vocal warm-ups are different from vocal technique exercises. You don't want to be doing a bunch of vocal technique exercises before you perform. That's like doing a heavy workout right before the big game. If you need a good warm-up routine, go back and revisit episode 68 of our show. And now ask yourself a question. Am I taking time to warm up before my biggest vocal tasks? If yes, add a point. Step four, daily vocal workload. Many times it's not our singing itself that ruins our vocal stamina. It's our daily vocal workload. Aside from your singing, how do you use your voice? Do you talk on the phone all day long? Do you have to speak loud over crowds or in a classroom? Do you paint the town red with your friends with all kinds of boisterous screaming? Nothing wrong with those things, but we've got to be aware of all the other places we use our voices. Some singers are vocally exhausted because of their day-to-day -day life without realizing it until it's time to sing. The singing voice simply can't do as much and doesn't last as long when it's running on fumes. So be aware of your daily vocal workload. Identify non-singing related changes you can make to how you use your voice and how much you use your voice. Question time. Am I conscious to not exhaust my voice outside of my singing life? If yes, add a point. Step five, compensatory habits. Some singers lose their voices from flat out poor technique. This usually means things like jaw tension, tongue tension, neck tension, spreading the embouchure, raising the larynx, pushing too much vocal weight and volume. We've talked about these things for years on the show. For a nice little summary, take a look back at episode 82. But also, do some of the work in front of the mirror when you practice. Make sure you're not seeing lots of extrinsic tension. Extrinsic tension is something that can wreck your vocal stamina in a hurry. Thankfully, it can be solved with awareness and thoughtfulness. You can use a combination of movement, physical touch, and intention to solve these issues if you see them. Question for you. Are you identifying and reducing vocal tension habits? If yes, add a point. Step six, repertoire selection. Many times we wanna make a strong impression on our audience, so we pick songs that we think are gonna be flashy and impressive. But if you're gonna do this, you gotta have great certainty that the song is in your technique. If you aren't nailing the song consistently in rehearsal, then I would wager it's gonna be much worse in performance. Your audience doesn't wanna see you up there struggling and straining. They wanna know that they're in good hands. So when it comes time for performance, make sure that you're only singing songs that are in your comfort zone. Question, am I performing songs that I know I can handle? If yes, Add another point. Step seven, singing Sabbath. New York is, of course, the city that never sleeps. When a New Yorker hears it's good to get eight hours of sleep, we say, what do you mean, per week? But while we New Yorkers like to push the limits, we must never underestimate the power of rest. Rest is the body's chance for restoration and growth. If you're not getting enough sleep, then your voice is not getting to heal, repair, and remember what it's learned. You're also singing on vocal folds that are probably swollen and sluggish, and you're using a lot of bad habits because your body's too tired to do it right. Get good sleep, and also, Take a day of rest, a singing Sabbath. If you're singing hard seven days a week, your stamina is really gonna take a hit. Give yourself a singing Sabbath. That's at least one day per week where you either don't sing or you don't sing your most athletic repertoire. Ask away, 
Do I honor the singing Sabbath each week? If yes, add a point. Step eight, let the microphone work for you. Contemporary singing uses a microphone for a reason. That reason? Loud singing does not equal good singing. In fact, it's usually just the opposite. When a singer is pushing volume, weight, breath, and force into the sound, it's not very pleasing to the listener. It's not only not pleasing, it reduces your vocal stamina. Practice your singing at comfortable volumes. And when it comes time for the big show, let the mic work for you. So the question? When I perform with a microphone, do I let the mic work for me? If yes, add another point. Step nine, what's it gonna cost me? The voice is capable of just about anything. Very few vocal decisions are utterly off limits. So it's not usually a question of right or wrong. It's more of a question of what's it gonna cost me? Things like loud belting, wider, more rock embouchures, certain elements of compression. All of these things are just fine, but they may be a little more spendy than other vocal choices. Examine your repertoire. Mark down areas that you feel are costly to you. See if there's a lighter or easier option as a backup plan. You can still spend some vocal cash on the money notes when you're in the recording studio or when the New York Times is in the audience. But for most performances, it's good for your voice to have the option of being a little more fiscally conservative. Question, am I aware of my vocal spending? If so, add a point. And the last step, flexibility as a foundation. We've saved the best for last because this is my personal favorite of all the stamina elements. For optimal stamina, you need to make sure that flexibility is the foundation for everything that you do. What does that mean? It means that every single note you sing needs to have falsetto, head voice, and flageolet at its core. That's right, every note needs to be able to get to its most cricothyroid dominant nature at any moment. I love belt, mix, vocal power, compression, rasp, distortion, as much as anyone you can find. But I'm also the first to tell you that anyone who desires to be strong must first be willing to make themselves weak. That means that every single day that you sing, regardless of your style or sound, you should be checking in with the lighter registers of your singing voice. If you can commit to this, I can basically guarantee your stamina will skyrocket. Final question, do I make falsetto, head voice, and flageolet a priority in my practicing? If yes, add two points. And now we're ready for your vocal stamina grading scale. If you scored a zero, you're a catastrophic crooner, which means you've really got some work to do. Is anybody in here an ENT? If you scored a one through three, you're a troubling troubadour. That means you've got some stamina working, but we really want you to have more. If you scored a four through a six, that makes you a mediocre minstrel. That's saying that your stamina is kind of hit or miss. And then the seven through nine, you're a dependable diva. That means that your stamina is really usually pretty good, but there's always some room for improvement. And 10 or even 11, if you scored that, you're a stamina saint. And I know that your voice is working for you really well each day. Tell us how you did by writing to us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the usual suspects. And remember to send your questions to us at questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. Whether it's day one or day 20,000 on your vocal journey, I believe that your best days are still out in front of you. Here's some more things to help your voice stand the test of time.
For voice lessons or Skype lessons with the NYVC staff, visit us at NewYorkVocalCoaching.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do at home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course. This 12-part program takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. You can find it at VoiceLessonsToTheWorld.com. Or if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at DailyVocalTips.com. And now, here's Justin with this week's Vocal Benediction. So many things in life are a flash in the pan. They're hot for one second, then a few months later, they fizzle away. People can scarcely even remember they happened. Weird, right? But let me tell you, my dear singer, you are not a flash in the pan, and your life is not a flash in the pan. Nope, you matter, and your singing matters. It's what connects you to the eternal, to the everlasting, to everything that matters. So don't forget that when it feels like everything's fading away. That's the most important vocal stamina lesson of all. No matter what you do, your singing does not plan to leave you today or tomorrow or ever. <laughs>